The Second Epistle to the Thessalonians, Chapter 3 In studying this chapter, to notice the importance of prayer in spreading the word and in assisting the spiritual development of brethren, to examine the purpose and methodology of discipline in a local congregation. In this last chapter, we first find Paul soliciting prayer in his behalf, that the word of the Lord might have free course and be glorified, and that he might be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. Second Thessalonians 3 verses 1 and 2 Finally, brothers, pray for us, that the word of the Lord may spread rapidly and be glorified, even as also with you, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and evil men, for not all have faith. Confident in the Lord to establish and guard them from the evil one, he is also confident that they will do the things he commands them. Second Thessalonians 3 verses 3 and 4 but the Lord is faithful, who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. We have confidence in the Lord concerning you, that you both do and will do the things we command. He follows with a prayer that the Lord direct their hearts into the love of God and into the patience of Christ. Second Thessalonians 3 verse 5 May the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patience of Christ. One last item needs to be discussed, and that is the need for disciplinary action towards those who are walking disorderly and not according to the tradition received from Paul. 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 6 Now we command you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother who walks in rebellion and not after the tradition which they received from us. Reminding them of his own example of laboring night and day while with him. Second Thessalonians 3 verses 7 through 9 For you know how you ought to imitate us, for we didn't behave ourselves rebelliously among you, neither did we eat bread from anyone's hand without paying for it, but in labor and travail worked night and day, that we might not burden any of you, not because we don't have the right, but to make ourselves an example to you, that you should imitate us. Paul charges that if anyone will not work, neither should he eat. Second Thessalonians 3 verse 10 For even when we were with you, we commanded you this, If anyone will not work, neither let him eat. Paul had heard there were members who had stopped working and had become busybodies. He exhorts such members to work in quietness and eat their own bread. Second Thessalonians 3 verses 11 and 12 for we hear of some who walk among you in rebellion, who don't work at all, but are busybodies. Now those who are that way we command and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ, that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. If they do not, the others are to note such persons, and not keep company with them, that they may be ashamed. Second Thessalonians 3 verses 13 and 14 but you, brothers, don't be weary in doing well. If any man doesn't obey our word in this letter, note that man, that you have no company with him, to the end that he may be ashamed. Such disciplinary action was to be administered in a brotherly way, not as toward an enemy. Second Thessalonians 3 verse 15 don't count him as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Paul closes his second epistle to the Thessalonians by first asking that the Lord of peace give them peace always and every way. Second Thessalonians 3 verse 16 Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in all ways. The Lord be with you all. 
He then offers a salutation in his own handwriting as a sign of authorship, followed with a prayer that the grace of the Lord be with them all. 2 Thessalonians 3, 17 and 18 The greeting of me, Paul, with my own hand, which is the sign in every letter, this is how I write, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. This is the conclusion of chapter 3 of the second epistle to the Thessalonians.